Hello guys, my name is Marisol. Welcome to my channel. I'll channel all about hiking and enjoying the outdoors. Um, I know it's been a little while since I posted a video. I have been dealing with an injury and uh, TV on that. But anyways, today we are at JB Starkey Wilderness Park in near my my house actually. Um, pretty much today we're gonna go through every single thing that you need to know about this park because this is where I'm gonna be doing my first solo backpacking trip. So I just wanna make sure I know everything that I need to know before I embark on this journey. But before I do that, I actually want to thank Tim from Backpacking with Buckley because last year I won a $50 gift card for Wetmark and I actually finally bought my first backpacking backpack. Uh, so I like it very much. I love the colors and how it's customizable to me. And also I want to thank Todd and Louise from In Our Element because I actually won, again, believe it or not, um, some socks from Cloudline. Uh, so I'm wearing them right now, I'm testing it out. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for everything and if you haven't subscribed to your channel, please make sure you do that. I'll post their links in the description box below because they're awesome people and they always give good advice. Anyways, let's go. We're at the kiosk. They do have uh, running water. Uh, there's nobody at the kiosk right now. And it's uh, actually closed for repairs. And right uh, next to the kiosk, you actually find the directory. And it's pretty cute because it's made out of wood. It's good information on the fees. And also that you must check in uh, by those times. All right, so a closer look, we are here at the kiosk. They have eight cabins, so we're gonna check those out. This is the restroom, and these are shelters. They have 16, 10 campsites. We're gonna check those out with, with a restroom and a shelter. And then up north here, they have the playground, pavilions, shelters, restrooms, and all that. And what I'm actually interested in is going with this um, hiking trail. And they do have primitive campsites on this section. They have about three. We're going to check those out. All right, this is a pretty good map of JB Starkey Wilderness. So the plan is to check the cabins and the tent sites. And from there, go to the remote size one two three i'm gonna check them out for my backpacking trip and from there i'm gonna check the entertainment section which is the pavilions the big playgrounds etc all right guys we have reached the cabin and tent section if you look at the sign it says cabins to the right tent camp to the left and for all it's actually where i parked uh those are the horse trails and i actually saw a couple horses so we're gonna check the cabin and tent let's start with the cabin there's supposed to be eight cabins and six and ten sites. Um, I found that the gate was locked. Alright, so this is cabin number one, right off the street over there. That's cover number one. And I guess that's cover number three. What? Okay. So right off the road, this is cover number one, cover number two, cover number three, cover number four, cover number five. So we're we'll coming number four, right behind it is the bike trail. I forgot to mention that this park also has a 13 mile paved road for the bikes. Uh, so if you live in the area, this is a good place to get your um, exercise in. All right, so I keep walking down the loop here and I found cover number six over here 
and this looks to be the closest cabin and it also has like a fire pit and barbecue stuff this is supposed to be the closest cabin to the restrooms that are over there they look pretty nice check out it's at 10 a.m but the restrooms are closed so i don't I don't know what that means. There's some water here. Also, water there. So you should be okay on water. On the middle here, there's some tables to eat. And no pets allowed in camping areas. Yeah, cabin 8, and I'm guessing that's cabin 7, and that one has water and a fire pit too. Yeah, that's cabin 7. I don't think anybody's here. It looks like it has like two bunk beds and a dining room table. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to check out the tent site. Okay, so I'm done looking at the cabins. Now I'm going to look at the tent camp site. It's, it's pretty much on the opposite side of the cabin. So back there was the cabins and now I'm here on the tents. Uh, there were eight cabins and there's supposed to be 16 tent sites. Uh, so let's check them out. Okay, so right at the bat we see camp number one i guess this is the area for the first site it has a pit a barbecue and a table to eat looks pretty nice okay so this is number two same kind of setup no camping beyond this point Okay, number one, after ten number two, there are restrooms here, I hope they're open. Has some water as well, it's nice. Check out by 10 a.m. and it's locked again. So this is number eight. Count number nine, count number ten. There's the restrooms, which is the same thing, which is the same one. 11, 12, 13, and I guess back there we see the parking lot. That's the crawl section. Uh, so you'll be close to the parking lot. 13, 12, they're close to it. If that's where you want to be. 14, same thing, close to the parking lot on the back end. 15 here, which is close to the parking lot as well. And there's one more. 16. 16 is really close to the road and also to the parking lot uh, behind me. But pretty much it's a loop and every and throughout the loop you see the sites. Sites uh, 11 through 16 are closer to the parking lot and to the road. The other ones are inward. Um, same thing for the cabins, it's on the loop and uh, number one is closer to the road and as you go farther, I think number six was actually on the back of the Viking trails but it's just a loop and they're opposite side of each other so if you want to uh, check them out, they're very close Alright, now that we're done with that section of the park, let's go find or let's go hike to those primitive campsites, let's go! Go to Corral, that's where you're gonna park your car. From that parking lot, you can easily go to the cabins, the tent site, and the backpacking uh, uh, loop. You can even bring your horses here and do that trail.
right at the start of the trailer you're gonna see uh, this sign that says primary campsites i guess we just follow that and see where that leads us so the ground changes from grass to extremely sandy so this is gonna be a challenge since i have no traction on this ground uh, so far it's a beautiful park and uh, it feels pretty safe there were houses before the spark so if anything happens i am close to civilization <laughs> There are several of these picnic tables throughout the trail. So if you want to stop and chill for a little bit, this is a good spot. All right, we have reached the end of the three mile loop and I guess you make a U-turn here and then you return that way. So you could do that, but since we're gonna go find the primitive campsites, it says right there, assigned to primary campsite so let's keep going losing time i'm fading fast i just want to make it last try to let go of the past i close my eyes and brace the blood what is cool about starkey wilderness park is that it also has bicycle trails so dirt road of course also you follow the green sign it goes that way all right so i'm at this intersection it's telling me to return no thanks uh I guess I'll keep following the orange place. Maybe. Okay, so that's right, you have to keep going and I find my first sign that says primitive campsites one to two to the right and primitive campsites three to the left. So I guess we'll go right first and then we we'll go back and then figure out where three is. All right, so I thought that was like a big bee or a big insect, but it turns out it's the uh, transmission power line. Uh, just making the buzzing sound. Yeah, it kind of freaked me out. I don't know if you guys can hear it. But I have to go under the power lines. Mile check 2.8. I'm getting a little worried because it's halfway down the loop. And I have not seen the signs for the primitive campsites. Is there a better way to actually navigate to those sites? I'm looking for the GPS coordinates to the actual sites. I uh, couldn't find anything. All trail doesn't tell me where it is. Uh, if you can let me know what you guys use, I highly appreciate it. Yay! So I thought I had to go back and find it, but I found the first one. Primitive campsite number one. It's actually kind of like at the end, like midway of the loop, so it wasn't that close as the map suggested at the entrance. So let's go. So back there is the campsite is currently occupied, so I don't want to disturb them, but I'll put the GPS coordinates in the description box below so you guys know where it is and are not scrambling like I was. All right, so that was at the mile marker 3.2 approximately. Now I'm gonna go find campsite number two. Um, hopefully it's as exciting as this one. <laughs> okay, like 0.1 mile from campsite number one, you can see a sign says campsite number two. So we will take that. Success! Found the second one! <laughs> it's very happy about this because I never had to do this before. Um, Alright, primitive campsite number two. I'm hoping it's not full so we can check it out. Alright, you see all of that with no shade. It says here primitive site uh, number two is that way with no shade again and I'm just gonna go down for a little bit because this is like already on mile marker number five and I need to go back at some point so I'm just gonna head down and hopefully it's not as far as the 
other one because when I saw the sign I thought it was almost there but it wasn't so it better be nearby because it's just a lot of sun right now and I want to get overheated again all right guys I'm turning back I did not go to campsite number two because I was already at 5.2 miles and I didn't see any signs for miles and miles so I'm gonna take my bike out and figure out what that is but I still put the GPS coordinates on my description box below um, but right now the sun is too hot so I need to get in the shade ASAP now you're kind of wondering why am I carrying a backpack if I'm not actually backpacking well as I found out and when I put my backpack on the way was this the way was a lot for me and I figure I probably should start training for this and I actually been walking around my complex about eight miles or so but the concrete kind of was a little bit too hard on my feet and my hips so I figure I'll give it a shot here in the wild and see how far I can get and kind of compare how those two went so far I'm six miles and I think I could do 10 miles which is my goal um, but yeah something I didn't know I had to train for and I have a huge respect for people that actually backpack because my my legs feel like uh, they're very hard to lift uh, with the weight on so yeah I had to practice and um, because next week I have a backpacking trip for about 10 11 miles um, so I really don't want to be a burden and sometimes you just gotta believe there's something that'll give you relief there's something that'll have what you need what you need All right, found the last one, campsite number three. Somebody was on there too, so I couldn't get that close. Basically, it was a picnic table and a grill, and that's pretty much it. Um, so now I'm just gonna head back. Campsite number three was actually on my way back, was on mile 6.7 or so. So now I just have to compare which one is close on number one, number three. I know number two is just way out there. Oh my God. Eight miles, two and a half hours later. I think I need a little break. I'm actually returning, but I'm gonna eat some snacks. While I do that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this park. All right, so this park is pretty safe. There were communities before entering this park. There are three primitive campsites, 16 tent sites, and eight cabins to um, do the backpacking. Um, camping you need to pay ten dollars and for the 10 sites is 15. I'll link all the primitive campsite coordinates description box below it looks to me like camping site number one is gonna be the one because I feel like that's a little bit more private and number three I could see it from a mile away so and number two is just way too far for me the only thing about this trail is that when you're hiking to the campsites you're pretty much out in the sun there's no shade whatsoever um, but the good news is that at the beginning of this trail the the ground is a little sandy but as you start going farther away it gets uh, grassy one of the things that i didn't like was crossing transmission lines uh, that just freaks me out a little bit but circuit wilderness has everything you need uh, cabins tent sites backpacking um, bike bike trails um, even has a pavilion to do parties, playground. There is no water whatsoever to go to the primitive campsites, but there's water and restrooms at the cabins and the tent sites and, and all of that. So for my solo backpacking adventure, I think I'm gonna book primitive campsite number one. Uh, I think that's gonna be private enough and closer, close enough to the parking lot. And I really hope I don't chicken out because I really wanna do this and get that under my belt. Ah, that was a good lunch. So I hope that was good information for you. And now I'm just gonna head back to my car that way. I think it's gonna be a 10 mile round trip overall. I'll let you know my stats at the end. All 
Alright guys, I'm almost uh, at the parking lot. I'll put the specs of my hiking uh, on this side. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for future hiking adventures. I'll be doing more backpacking and trying to figure out this primitive campsite uh, location. So if you want more information, it's inspiration, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for future adventures. See ya!